My name is Dr. Rebecca Pearson and I am a senior lecturer in psychiatric epidemiology in Bristol Medical School. Simply put, if, if your mum is say depressed, the child is more likely to go on to have depression and we want to kind of break that cycle. So currently um, I'm leading a programme of work all focused on trying to break this intergenerational transmission of mental health um, and looking in depth at family interactions, the role of genetics um, and using big data and new methods such as um, wearable cameras at home and there's good evidence from around the world actually that young people generally in their 20s or, or under um, have shown rise in anxiety. Our own data um, here children the 90s um, I assume it's about doubled um, rate of anxiety than what we would be expecting so that's kind of levels of anxiety reaching what we would call kind of um, needing needing help um, in young children we've got some recent data suggesting that emotional difficulties are kind of 10 points higher than we would expect at about kind of age eight. It was an important time before the pandemic. We were already seeing rises in um, mental health difficulties in women, in, in mothers um, and in young people. But now if, if we're now seeing a doubling of that, we really need to understand why. Also, it's a really important time for research because everything we thought we knew about risk factors has all completely changed. We're not necessarily seeing the same people that would be um, at risk. We're seeing new onset and we just need to understand what's going on. You know, different types of mental health um, difficulties are showing up. You know, we've seen particular rise in eating disorders, particular rise in um, obsessive compulsive, you know, things that are related to do with lack of control and uncertainty. So we just need to understand and then look to how to help. Our research tends to involve tracking patterns of mental health but also we are using other methods kind of observational methods so, so some of the work that we've been doing involves these little cameras and so we can record interactions use the footage and then break down using some quite nice software actually into micro interactions of emotions and behaviors and that gives us a kind of better understanding how um, emotional issues manifest We've also started to want to include the children at a young age. So young people are beginning to be included in research and often that starts you know, at more secondary school age. We, we think we know about children's mental health and emotional difficulties, but really hearing what this has been experienced like for them is going to be invaluable. And we've, we've, we've started to do that. Well, because I can't go to school, which is a sad one, and upset because I miss my teachers and everybody else. The work has been having ongoing impact, so the Children of the 90s study has been feeding in early findings to um, Public Health England through HGI UK and SAGE reports. So early on, the rise in anxiety that was noted was fed in and also identifying particular members of the public who might be vulnerable, so showing that those living alone um, were more vulnerable to depression and anxiety. And, and I think that that contributed to policies around uh, support bubbles, which we did have um, straight away in lockdown free. So the ultimate impact that we hope over the years to gain is to contribute to breaking this intergenerational cycle of mental health problems which if nothing changes this is a projected mental health crisis for young people.